welcome back for our second week in our Lenten journey. This week I brought you out to beautiful Lemoyne's Point, right in the heart of the city of Kingston. Lemoyne's Point is 136 hectares of woods and fields and marshes with all kinds of trails lined uh, through it. Uh, I used to bring my children out here when they were young and uh, we just had wonderful days here at Lemoyne's Point. Quite a history to the place too, uh, going back uh, a couple of centuries at least. Uh, lots to read about if you want to look at the history, but a couple of things that strike me uh, back in the days when we're, our uh, relationship with our neighbors to the south was a little bit less uh, cordial than it is now. There used to be cannons set out on the point way over there to protect the city of Kingston uh, from possible invasion during the War of 1812. Uh, a little later on, towards the end of the 19th century, uh, William Hugh Coverdale, as a young boy, used to travel around Lemoyne's Point, walking around and enjoying the place. Later on, in his mid-40s, after he had made his fortune in the United States and became the founder of Canada Steamship Company, he bought the uh, property of Lemoyne's Point and lived here. It was a place of retreat for his family where they would come and kind of have a chance to recharge the batteries and just enjoy the beauty of this area. Lemoyne's Point is located right in the heart of the city of Kingston. And what I especially love about this place is that it is a place where you can come and kind of step out of the busyness of the city and you're in this wonderful place. It's a, it's a place where your spirits actually lift as you come here. Uh, it's not uncommon when you're walking the trails of the point that the people you meet, uh, there's always a smile, there's always a hello. It's just a, a wonderful place. Compared to the busyness of the city where people are working down the streets and trying to get from point A to point B. Today as we're gathered here, Lemoyne Point, it's, it's minus 17 today and you can probably tell my face is frozen. <laughs> but we're in the heart, the beginning of the season of Lent and uh, it's, it's really quiet in the point. It has its own beauty in winter. But here in a few short weeks, uh, this place is going to be transformed. And I think it's a powerful Lenten image for us as we continue in this, in this pilgrimage of Lent. Uh, within a few short weeks, uh, the snow will be gone, flowers will begin to come, and it becomes a place that just springs to life. You know, the, the season of Lent, that word Lent, comes from an old English word, which is the root word of length or lengthen. So uh, we speak about the lengthening days. So the season of Lent really can translate to mean spring, and it's a time of life. But on this second week in the season of Lent, I've chosen to focus on a reading that we probably encountered uh, in the last season, uh, last Sunday in the season of Epiphany, uh, when we examined the Transfiguration readings. It's one of the optional readings for the second Sunday in Lent, and I want to focus on it again. Because one of the things that I find so powerful about a place like this, and you may have heard the phrase used before of uh, the thin places of the world, the places where you go to kind of uh, connect more with the divine in the reality of the world around us. This is one of those thin places as, as far as I'm concerned. It's, uh, it's a place where we come and reconnect once more. In that passage from Luke's Gospel in chapter 9, Jesus, there's much happening there. There's lots of action. In the beginning of chapter 9, we read about where Jesus has sent the 12 disciples out on mission. They have gone out into the world. He's given them authority and power to proclaim and to heal. And uh, that news is beginning to spread because we read that Herod has caught wind of it. And he's beginning to inquire about this mission and its ministry and who this Jesus is. The twelve return and report back to Jesus all that they have seen and done. And then you notice through that ninth chapter, Jesus t tries to take them away to the quiet places, to reconnect with who they are and with their mission and with the vision of what he wants them to do. And particularly when it comes time in that latter part of chapter 9, where he takes Peter, James and John, he takes them up on a mountain and it says to pray to draw closer to the divine, to draw closer to that message in heart and in soul. And so I'm, it's not a mountain here in this place, but it certainly is a place that is, as I say, a thin place to connect. It's in that moment 
that as they are as they are up on that mountain and as they are communing with God that this wonderful uh, transformation takes place in the transfiguration story. Moses and Elijah appear, those two great figures of Israel, and they are talking with Jesus about what it means when they come down from the mountain, when they re-engage the world and continue on that journey to Jerusalem. What is going to happen when Jesus arrives to Jerusalem and we start moving through that wonderful story of Holy Week beyond, as I say, to the empty tomb of Easter. So I hope you have an opportunity as we take this journey to, as we, to pause for moments and find those thin places in your life, to draw closer in prayer and reflection to that divine story that connects with your story and your life. We're out here today in Lemoyne's Point. Like I say, it's cold. It's minus 17 here. Uh, Lent and Easter are kind of early this year. But as you take that journey, take those moments, feel the warmth of that spirit filling you, and then we'll continue on the journey next week. It was great to be with you. I hope you've enjoyed our brief walk through Lemoyne's Point and more so continuing that inner journey and heart and soul of the Lenten pilgrimage. See you next week.